Hello, everybody. I just want to say good morning to those of you who've joined us for uh, this discussion we're going to have on leadership. We're just uh, waiting for uh, another few minutes in the hope that the two other panellists will be able to join us. They are desperately trying to uh, get on the platform successfully. Um, so we're just going to give them a few more minutes in the hope that we can all begin together. But I can see quite a few of you are already with us, ready and waiting uh, for this discussion to start. And it will do. Uh, as you can see, my one panellist, Adalibor Jevcic, has been here for a while, waiting patiently. So hopefully we can begin soon. But we're just going to wait a few more minutes before we get started. Stay with us, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's going to be a good discussion and hopefully our two ministers can join us in the near future. <clears throat> okay, so we'll start in about two minutes time, everybody. We are hoping our two panellists, the other panellists, will be able to join us um, as and when. They seem to have technical problems, which is the devil, isn't it, in these new world of conferencing during COVID. <laughs> We're at the mercy of technology. So uh, I will begin in around about a minute's time. Thank you all for being with us and stay with us. We'll, we'll start very soon.
All right, we are going to begin and uh, it starts with uh, a good morning to you all and a very, very warm welcome to this panel discussion, which is part of today's RASA's extraordinary meeting, their annual meeting for 2020. Um, and what a packed program it is today. I mean, some 900 speakers almost, uh, all sharing their expertise and insights today. So it's a really rich agenda for those of you who have chosen to be a part of today's annual meeting. It was a good decision. So this panel discussion, I won't call it a panel at this point, I'll call it an interview, because <laughs> at the moment, we don't have two of our panelists connecting with us, which is a real shame. They are behind the scenes, desperately trying to get things to work. So they may well appear uh, during the time that we are together, which would be wonderful if they can uh, join us. But we're going to talk about leadership. And in these mm -hmm. unprecedented times, what is required from global leaders? Some might say that some out there, some global leaders who are on the world stage are very reluctant right now to inspire others to uh, be joined in mutual beneficial uh, ventures. So trade wars is something that has been a big discussion in the last three years. Other barriers emerging in many countries as nationalism and protectionism has come to the fore. So what can be done about this and what steps do we all need to take to lead and bring progress and how can global leaders encourage unity and inspire so uh, my name is sally bundock you may have seen already i mo work most of my working week is at bbc world news i present the breakfast programs um and i when i'm at work i present three and a half hours of live television it's all news business, finance, a bit of sport. That's not my specialism, I might add. The business and the finance side is my area of expertise. And I have the fascinating, I have the, you know, the, the privilege of interviewing all sorts of people who are absolutely fascinating, some incredible heads of state, politicians, chief executives of some of the world's biggest companies, and also small companies, entrepreneurs, startups, celebrities, scientists, a lot of epidemiologists lately. I've talked to a lot of them. The list is quite long, but also normal people who've been found themselves to be in extraordinary circumstances. Um, so that's a real pleasure to do the job that I do, but it's a real pleasure as well to be involved in panels such as these, where we really are able to talk in depth about the key issues of the day. When I'm interviewing uh, Top politicians sometimes on the BBC, I get two or three minutes if I'm lucky and I'm being screamed at in my ear to, to wrap them up, <laughs> which is sometimes not so easy depending on who they are. So we've got plenty of time this morning, which is great. So let me introduce to you uh, Dalibor Jevtic, who's been patiently waiting for this to begin, um, a Serbian politician in Kosovo whose career spans multiple governments. Prior to his fifth appointment in the office of the Minister for Communities and Return, Mr. Jevtic served as International Project Manager, Deputy Mayor and Deputy Prime Minister in the government of Kosovo. And his extensive institutional experience in human rights protection, reconciliation and democracy building in Kosovo and abroad. Um, and so a very rich experience of what has been a very difficult history, recent history there. So Dalibor Jevtic, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So we'll hear from you and hopefully, you never know, during uh, our time this morning, we may well be joined by Jenny Gilruth, who's Minister for Europe and International Development in Scotland. She's supposed to be a part of the panel and she's trying to get online. And Julie Ann Genta, who bless her, is trying to get involved from New Zealand. She is a Minister for Women, Associate Minister for Health and Associate Minister for Transport in New Zealand. So I'm hoping those two female politicians will be able to join us as well. But Dalibor, if we get started, um, give us, first of all, your views on, you know, leadership. What is critical at this time and what are we not seeing when we look at global leaders around the world? I'm just thinking about the first presidential debate that took place this week, for example. I mean, what is lacking and what's needed? Well, first, uh, good morning to all. Uh, good morning to you, Sally. I'm very uh, pleased that I have a chance and opportunity to participate in this 
very important event, and I hope that uh, other my colleagues will join us. Uh, soon. Uh, we talked briefly before uh, how it's uh, different uh, doing this kind of uh, debates or uh, interviews or whatever. It's a lot different when you have a chance to put someone to talk directly. However, uh, I'm happy that I can uh, share some of my thoughts uh, and experience. As someone who, as you said, uh, uh, has been in office, uh, this is my fifth mandate, and uh, uh, working uh, in this part of Europe, uh, uh, it's very, it's always been challenging. Uh, as you know, the history of the Balkans, uh, we've been, we go through very difficult uh, times uh, of conflicts, and we are now trying to actually have built different and better future for all. And this is not an easy, easy job, especially when you have leaders that uh, you know uh, have a different goals. And uh, some of the leaders, unfortunately, still believe in conflict and in different methods, methods of, of uh, managing things. Let me put it. I never consider myself as a politician. Uh, as someone who was uh, uh, in a management business before I joined politics, uh, um, uh, trying to change things uh, from different perspective, and this was never an easy job. So we as leaders, we have all responsibilities for the developments. Uh, as I said, uh, there is a leader that rather want to see um, or have uh, more social problems because this is the river where they swim a lot better than in the river when you have better economy. Um, as, you, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, uh, we saw that debate uh, before the presidential election in the United States. It's, it was very, very interesting. Um, I have to point out uh, that uh, uh, having in mind the, the current time, um, having in mind that this year, is, it's a lot different that uh, probably change a lot of plans uh, across the globe. Um, our approach, uh, uh, you know, uh, use, uh, having in mind these circumstances was, was, uh, was changed as well. Um, something that uh, I was always uh, putting as important, uh, 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 let's say, not just a thought, but let me see a goal, is that life should be before any politics or any policy. Uh, this is something that I truly believe. If you, um, you know, uh, dealing and approaching the solving the problems uh, with the goal of, of putting life before everything else, life of ordinary people, to ensure that we create uh, normal conditions for, for, for them, uh, you know, I think that uh, then the policy doesn't have a lot of a lot of space to be. Something that I say, play politics, uh, daily daily needs of the politics or, 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 or goals. Um, I said this, and I'm trying, uh, as someone who has been in, in this position, uh, responsible for something that is the uh, basic human rights of non-majority communities in Kosovo and return of the refugees, which is a very difficult job, even though that uh, two decades after the conflict has been over and ended here in Kosovo we still are facing a lot of problems. And this is because uh, you have still people, uh, they're nationalists, you still have a people, they're, you know, uh, through the nationalism, they actually protect their own interests, not the interest of, of the people. And this is something that is, is a big challenge. You know, when you um, deal uh, with problems of the way to protect yourself, not the, the the interests of the of the majority that just want to live, uh, have a normal life, then you know, then then you then your policies it, it's wrong, and the ordinary people actually are the one that pay pay the, 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 the most the price. So um, uh, recently, uh, I know how many people follow up this. Uh, uh, leaders of Serbia and Kosovo met in the White House, and uh, there has been reached agreement that there has been called, or it's, it's called uh, economic uh, peace agreement between Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, agreement uh, that should bring uh, two sides together through the economic development, uh, which I think this is the, the, the approach uh, that I personally like because. 
if we open the borders, if we have free trade, uh, free travel of people uh, without any problems, we're going to have less tensions and we're going to have better economy. Um, better economy, economy means less space for those that want to put nationalism in front of, of, of anything else. So uh, personally, I really uh, applaud to this agreement in the White House. And uh, especially because part of agreement for me personally uh, was uh, point 12 when they talk about refugees. So refugees uh, is for me a very important question as well. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to see how this agreement of two leaders of uh, Kosovo and Serbia will be implemented. And the most problem that we have here is the implementation, not just agreements, but the laws and etc. So if we work more on the implementation, if, uh, if we actually implement whatever we agree on, what we have in, in the laws, it will be a lot better. Now, uh, uh, looking at just this topic that we have today, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really seeing this agreement as a chance and opportunity for this region as inspiration for other leaders to have different approach to avoid uh, in the future problems and putting nationalism in front of, of uh, in front of uh, everything else, uh, this is our chance. You know, there is there is there is a, a story that every fifty years in the Balkans we have wars. Hopefully, this will end, and we have a responsibility today to ensure with our let's say the way how we lead things today how we work on, on the problems today to prevent any more conflicts in the future and to prevent a uh, growing of the nationalism that was, and it still is kind of the problem here in this part uh, of, of the Europe. Okay, and the economic peace agreement that you said was brokered <clears throat> recently, when did, when did that happen? Uh, that happened in the Oval Office of the President Trump. Uh, was, that, was that this year or? Yeah, yeah, that that was on the September. Uh, uh, oh, so very recently then. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, less than a month ago. Okay, uh, and and to get to that point, what did it take to get to this point where you could have the two leaders, you know, in the US agreeing an economic peace agreement? Was there, you know, what what had to happen in the background to get to that point? Well, uh, short history, uh, Belgrade and Pristina, or Kosovo and Serbia, have been trying for decade now, almost a decade now, to reach the, the peace agreement through Brussels dialogue. And uh, there was a different agreements, but unfortunately that have, have not been implemented so far. Uh, and uh, this is the main problem. When you don't implement something that you agree on, you lose the trust, and then you cannot trust to, to each other, and, and that that become a real problem. Uh, uh, President Trump has a special envoy for dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, and uh, that was the ambassador uh, Richard Brennell, who was ambassador of the United States in, in Berlin. He's still special envoy for for the dialogue. So, so when I met him. It's, he said, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about policy. I don't want to talk about politics. I do understand you have a lot of difference between Serbs and Albanians. Okay. I want to talk about the economy. And this should be the way how we can solve the conflict that has been for the centuries. Now, uh, uh, I said, I agree. So we talk about projects, what we can develop. So uh, uh, finally, uh, and this has been going through some time over, over the year and a half, uh, different way of communication meetings before this actually main event happened in the White House. Um, so uh, the agreement went to, okay, uh, we're gonna build a peace road, peace highway, um, so we can connect uh, uh, all the way from Belgrade to Pristina, uh, you know, this part of Europe. Uh, there is a small uh, part of the road that has not been built yet. 
Uh, we're going to uh, open the new airline between Belgrade and Pristina. We're going to uh, open other other line of communication, and we're going to create something we, that we call Mini Schengen, which means opening the borders between Kosovo and Serbia, uh, North Macedonia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and Albania. Uh, and this is the great thing, uh, because this is the model of the Europe, actually something that we would like to see. Uh, this area is too small, and just when you, whenever you try to go after one hour or two hours, you need to put, uh, you, you need to have your passport. You need to wait for the hours on the border. It's wasting of time. It's wasting of money. So, uh, part of 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 of, of this was the, and I have to say that the, the dialogue itself was not easy. Uh, uh, President of Serbia, uh, Vucic, and Prime Minister of Kosovo, Hoti, spent uh, uh, a lot of time uh, on this main event uh, before they, they reach uh, this, this agreement. And part of this agreement is, is uh, of, of course, dealing with some of the natural uh, resources regarding energy, and etc., and etc. Um, and uh, uh, something uh, that I saw uh, that didn't happen before in the dialogue, that's immediately after the agreement has been reached. Delegation from the White House with uh, different businessmen and economists came to Belgrade, Pristina, starting implementation immediately of the agreement. And this is the something that gives us a hope that we finally go in the right directions. And I'm glad that policy is not priority. I'm glad that politics is not involved. We talk about the economy and how we can build relations through the economy uh, uh, only. And it seems, you know, as you say, Richard Reynolds said, look, I don't want to talk about politics. I just want to talk about economics. And from what you're saying, it would seem that a lot of the progress has been made where you, you have focused on, through economic development, bringing people together making life easier and increasing people's standard of living, you know, their, their economic wealth, as it were. If, if people have a better sense of, stand, you know, their standard of living, they feel more secure, they feel more confident, they are by nature happier <laughs> and more open to being uh, friendly to their neighbour, as it were. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, how you have to focus or even push to one side the, the, the difficult stuff in order to make progress and then make progress within the politics, would you say? Yeah, I fully agree. You know, something that uh, 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 I have to say, uh, you know, uh, the situation, uh, uh, looking from the political perspective, uh, here in Kosovo is let's say, unstable. We don't have stable majority in the parliament and uh, any kind of the political agreement, it's hard to deliver through the votes in the parliament to be supported. Um, and I, 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 I'm not happy to see when the most of the parties put nationalism in front of anything else. Because uh, uh, this is because we have poor economy, because uh, the social situation is unstable, and then when you have solution for this, you, you put these topics in front. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, you're playing on, on the feelings of the people. You, you build these tensions between communities. And this is not good. Yeah. And it's not good. I have a lot of friends, Albanians. I have a lot of friends different from different nationalities. And I respect them all. And for me, they're, they're all the same. And we have no problem communicating on a daily basis. We have no problem working together. But when the politics come uh, as priority, then everything, uh, you know, things has changed. And this, this is not good. You know, when I talk about dialogue, I said, put things that will affect life of the people on a daily basis. You know, uh, nobody will care if you agree on some diplomatic or political uh, uh, topic. They will more care if you say, okay, from tomorrow, you will not have to pay or you will not have to spend time on the border. You will not have to go through this procedure. Uh, we accept, uh, uh, you know, things that makes people life easier. Opening new jobs. This is the key. 
uh, with better economy, with more jobs, less pay for those people that will play on the feeling of the nationalists and build the tensions between people. Yeah. Uh, just to mention, we've got uh, lots of people watching us around the world, which is great. It's lovely to have you on board. Do send us your questions. If you've got set questions for Dalibor, just send them through. We're hearing, for example, I'm just looking at some of the comments. Alice Bromarch, who says, I lived and worked in Kosovo as you were developing your new government in 2002. You've come a long, long way, she says. So there's a vote of confidence from Alice, which is nice. Uh, we've got Angela watching us in Scotland, who runs a grassroots whole system personal leadership social enterprise. Um, if you need another, she says. So there's lots of comments coming in. Thank you so much for being a part of this discussion. So, Dalibor, when we look at what we need in leadership in, in, the, in, the, in the year that we're in now, obviously you have learned so much in your time and in your various roles in government in Kosovo. What can you, you know, share with us today that would benefit leadership globally? We have a lot of uh, CEOs watching us now, founders of various companies that are tuning in from all over the world. What can they take away, especially when we see in global leadership, you know, more division in some cases and we're seeing collaboration? Well, you know, um, something that uh, I have to put out as, as uh, um, something that I believe in personally, uh, uh, Kosovo, uh, it's uh, in the southern Balkans in, in very, very uh, good position when the roads are crossing towards east, uh, between east and west, let's say, and uh, um, you know, uh, we have uh, near us uh, uh, two large uh, uh, cities, uh, Thessaloniki in Greece. We have uh, uh, other other capitals very near, and a lot of a lot of uh, trades happening through this this area. Uh, people avoiding uh, uh, going through Kosovo, they they avoid to to travel and uh, trade uh, through Kosovo because of all the conflicts that we had in the past. Things are changing now. And we have a, a better future. Uh, well, we we see we see a lot of chances, chances and potential. Uh, the place where I live, it has been uh, the greatest uh, ski resort in the ex Yugoslavia. Uh, it was uh, when we had Olympic Games in Sarajevo in 1984. Uh, Brezovica has been alternative uh, mountain for some of the competition. Do the, the snow no reason and uh, uh, today Brezovica uh, uh, doesn't look that well because of the politics because of the conflicts we have and I'm, I'm, uh, we're working on building up economy in this part and uh, with developing of this ski resort again we're going to have uh, more jobs we're going to have a uh, better economy for all and this will not involve only Kosovo because we are on the border with North Macedonia and very nearby Albania, this will help people that live in this area. With, with opening the borders, uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have chance for for uh, more involvements of, of uh, you know people from these countries. Now I have to say, so we have this many CEOs, and I'm very happy to see them joining uh, to this discussion. Uh, uh, first, uh, you know when I say. Please come to Kosovo, and you're welcome to to hear. Uh, I don't say this just, you know. Uh, uh, I, I really, uh, I really mean this. And uh, uh, with this new agreement, with this new economy development that I expect to have, uh, I think uh, uh, this place will be a good chance for everyone to see an opportunity to to develop a, a new economy and uh, possible potential business for them. Um, uh, I say this because through, through the years, uh, being in the Kosovo government, um, you know, uh, seeing what was the priorities in one moment and what, what is priority today, I, I can see the progress going to these directions that things will develop in a, in a better, positive way. Of course, we as the leaders have um, a, a huge responsibility to ensure that our invitation 
will not end up with a disappointment of um, people that lives here than the potential investors. And uh, we have responsibility to ensure that our invitation is not just uh, uh, by Kurdozi, it, it's invitation that say, okay, uh, we are ready to, to, uh, uh, to become a better place for life for everyone, and we are ready to become a better place for, for uh, any investors in the future. All right. Can I just throw a comment at you that's coming from someone watching us, Adam Jacoby, who says, uh, there's no surprise that the U.S. administration is focused on economic rather than the hard stuff. Is a society that's centered on a hyper-capitalistic economic model a society that is sustainable? I mean, this is what you and I were discussing just moments ago about focusing on the economics in the hope that you'll bring better politics. Is that sustainable? Uh, this is something that we didn't try before. And uh, I do believe that it's sustainable. Of course, time to time will we'll, we'll, uh, better give better answer to this. However, I have to believe in it because everything else that we have been tried before didn't work. Um, uh, it depends on us. The way how we implement what we agree on, the way how we actually proceed with the, uh, all the plans that we have in agreement, that, that's how, how sustainable will be in the future, the whole thing. I mean, one thought that came to my mind when I, when I read that comment and, you know, we talk about economics and all the, all the, the various developments we can do, etc. I was just thinking about South Africa at the end of apartheid, you know, when President Mandela was in, in position and how they set up the Truth and Reconciliation Committee as a forum for bringing healing and a, a, a conversation to be had where people had a platform to talk about not just the economics and, you know, that kind of practical stuff, but what's happened in their world and, and, and how they can learn from that to make sure that never happens again. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And this is exactly the same model that we use here in Kosovo. And we call the thing, you know, the, the Commission for the Truth and the Reconciliation. It's, it's not an easy process, you know. Yeah. We still have missing persons. We still have uh, families that, uh, you know, feel the pain of the conflict. We have to look each other in the eyes and say, okay, enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not forget, but we have to be ready to forgive yeah. And, uh, this is a chance. Uh, this is a chance uh, if we want to ensure that our children and the generation that are coming will not go through the same pain that we went through. This is the chance that uh, the next generation will talk not about who is which nationality, but they will rather talk about uh, how they can build businesses, how they can build economy. Um, and uh, the model the, uh, uh, that we use uh, uh, is exactly, you know, I would, I would say the same as, as you mentioned, uh, uh, experience is different, but uh, um, we need to use uh, uh, our experience in the benefit of the future, not uh, in a negative, but in a positive way. Yeah, I'm just here. I'm just seeing comments coming in through because I was uh, really hoping that Julianne Genta could join us. Um, and I know she's having trouble in New Zealand to connect with us, which is a real shame. But because she's originally from California in the United States, um, I was going to get her view on what's going on in the US at the moment, obviously, with this presidential race uh, very much underway now. November the 3rd is not far away at all for the election. And with the um, conflict we've seen in the US on, on many issues, but also the Black Lives Matter movement, the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. Um, we were going to talk about that with, with her and sort of get a sense of where leadership can bring some sort of unity and um, bring people together in, you know, on a local level that's so, so important. Um, in terms of global leadership, what would you like to see, Dalibor, going forward, where we have seen a lot of 
uh, disunity. I mean, thinking of the UK and Brexit, for example, that's been something that's dominated our political agenda since the referendum in 2016 and continues to do so. And it's all about coming apart as opposed to, but at the same time, we're, we're, we've got trade talks underway now and we're trying to come together in a new way. What, what would you like to see in terms of global leadership going forward? Well, first, you, you read, there is a one short comment. Uh, when you said, and it's part of this topic, what the leaders can do uh, to ensure that uh, you know we we uh, create uh, on the local level uh, less conflicts and more cooperation. Uh, you know, through experience that we have uh, in a dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia that happens in Brussels, when, when whenever we have leaders meeting and make agreement, any kind of agreement, we have less tensions in the field. You know, and and when when we have we have over one year a break from in the dialogue because of different political movements uh, and decisions that happens here, um, uh, then we have more tensions. This is what can leaders do. Okay, uh, uh, the little thing that they can do is sit and talk about problems. You know, when when ordinary people see this, they'll see the chance that something will happen. In a positive way. Now, on the global level, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, dialogue. Or I connect to this part. Uh, uh, and when when the EU take a leader leadership on a dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia, um, you know, the mechanisms on uh, uh, implementation of agreement was uh, related to the EU integration. And for example, in Serbia, they have a, a special chapter 35 that says that Serbia will join EU after they close all other chapters when they solve the problem with Kosovo. And you know, this was the mechanism, one of the mechanism created in this process. Now, uh, since we have Brexit, since we have some other unfortunate uh, developments within the EU. Uh, this pandemic was uh, was actually something that also created new moments, we have to say that. Uh, the way how things develop in some other areas, uh, things can change. And this is why we have, uh, let's say, less interest uh, on the both sides in this process uh, to actually go and talk in Brussels and this is how the United States become more, uh, let's say, uh, interesting place uh, for the leaders to meet and, and reach uh, uh, the agreement that has been reached. Uh, so how the, the way how things develop between within the EU, uh, between EU and United States, uh, and now with these new moments that we have, situation in Belarus, the situation that we have between Germania and Azerbaijan, this all affect the, the things here. And um, uh, I see a lot of comments these days after the conflict starts between Azerbaijan and Romania, uh, people are afraid how this will affect uh, uh, Balkans, how this will affect Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, we will not uh, uh, have uh, something that we have in the past. And this is where the, 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 the leaders have uh, played a key role. This is why we want to see more, more uh, uh, peace agreements in the world. We want to see more uh, different developments that will lead us to more stability. Interesting that as you're talking, several have been chatting away. I don't know if you're able to see the chat, the chat on the side of your screen, but we've got Angela, for example, who says, um, so in response to ordinary citizens, can we discuss the creative inspiration, the courage that potential new leaders need as leadership needs new talent with a new mindset? We've got Adam who agrees with that. We've got Simone who says, you know, there are a lot of leadership challenges in the world today. How do ministers in Kosovo work on their leadership capacities and their skills? <laughs> Are you getting training, Dalibor? That's what we want to know. But what I was going to say, though, was 
I mean, I interview a lot of leaders, whether they be in politics, in business, in entertainment or sport. And I have to say, I have noticed in the last few years, you know, what you describe as millennials or the next generation, they are hungry for leaders who are creative, who think out the box. They are coming out with fantastic, innovative ideas to solve problems that they see, you know. And, and, and this is like a new leadership that's that's coming up, you know, through these generations. And, and they're looking at current global leaders and they're scratching their heads. I mean, I go back to the debate, you know, two men in their 70s in the US having a, a verbal, you know, debate. And and they're looking and thinking, where is the new skill? Where is the, 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 the inspiration and, and the creativity in the leadership? And we only have a few minutes left, Alibor, I'm being told. We've got three minutes to go. So just okay. your last and final thoughts. Uh, I have to say that uh, uh, first, uh, something that I learned through my career is, is the, the lessons that not have to be my personal that I learned from my mistakes, but from uh, other people's mistakes. So no matter in this job, in, in the government, or previous job in, in a business management, uh, I always learn from different lessons. So we have to learn something from the history. You know, you know, I'm not happy when I see younger generation talking about wars, the only way of, of solving the problems that we have between people here in the Balkans. And especially because uh, they, they learn wrong way of, of history. Uh, you know, this is not, uh, I don't know, 14th century when the fights happened with the swords and in the field somewhere. The, the, the weapons today are very, very dangerous to the humanity. To the humanity. Uh, we don't want to see the things from, <coughs> from the Middle East. Uh, uh, we're, we had enough here in Balkans even. Uh, we, we're, we don't want to see. And this is something that has to be our, our main, uh, main lesson learned. Uh, do not repeat the same mistake that previous leaders did. Uh, war is not the way to uh, solve the conflict. We can work together. Uh, our differences, if we have them, we need to use as our tool to make future better. And this is something that uh, uh, that I, I personally believe in. Life before politics and policy, policy is the, the, the best way uh, for the future of everyone. Well, thank you so much. Dalibor Jevtich for being with us today. I truly appreciate it because if you weren't here, it would have been a very uh, lonely conversation, just me me and those tuning in. Uh, but we really appreciate you being so frank about what you've experienced and your sharing your expertise with us today and your thoughts. And I want to thank you all of you watching as well. And um, and I can see Pamela Kennedy where from the Scottish Government saying thanks so much for a stimulating discussion. Jenny Gilruth uh is so sorry she was uh, unable to connect with this panel and the audience this morning technical problems but she looks forward to following up on this i am very sorry that jenny gilruth couldn't join us and julianne genta and i appreciate they probably had a very frustrating time time trying to get online uh we did miss them and their comments but thank you all of you for tuning in and thank you for your comments and um there is so much more ahead today at the harassus extraordinary meeting so uh, don't go anywhere. There's loads of panels still to come and discussions. But from me and from Dalibor Jevcic, we just want to say goodbye and thank you for your company. Dalibor, great to talk to you. Thanks for all your co commentary today. Thank you. It was really a pleasure. Thank you all for, for watching. Uh, I was uh, very pleased that I uh, participated in uh, this yeah. very, very good conversation. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, everybody have a really good day. And just keep this conversation going. Keep talking about leadership, what needs to change, what we can do, and the discussions we can have ahead. But for now, we're 28 seconds early, but we're just going to say goodbye. Thank you all and goodbye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.